Meet Arnold, and today he's in Europe checking out this ancient temple. And it's pretty creepy in here. Hey, who turned off the light? Hmm. Arnold, you better not touch anything. What's going on? Arnold, run! Mother of God, it looks like we're now in the 13th century. And we're here during the Holy Inquisition. Hey. What an awesome trip. The main mission of the Inquisition was fighting the heretics. Hey, what did Arnold even do? Ooh, I think I get it now. They mistook your phone for a weapon of black magic. The Inquisition didn't get along so well with progress. When Giordano Bruno proved that the Earth revolves around the sun, it completely contradicted Catholic ideas. Arnold, you're out of luck. In those days, all redheads were suspected of having ties with the devil. Relax. At first, they'll just question you. Take a seat and calm down. The chairs here are made of iron, specifically so that they can be heated. Confessions were usually obtained through torture. You need to give up heresy, Arnold. During the time of the Inquisition, a lot of heathen rituals were mistaken for black magic. They tried to convert heathens to Catholicism. Come on, Arnold, embrace Catholicism and you'll be free. It's true the Inquisition sometimes let those truly repentant go free. Holy baloney, what now? It looks like someone reported you. People often accused others of heresy in order to get rid of them. I don't know if you can endure any more of these tortures, Arnold. Meet the Spanish boot, the heretic's fork, and the Judas cradle. Arnold, I heavily advise you to confess about everything. Okay, by signing this, you agree that you're a necromancer, a magician, and a gnome. The positive thing is that the tortures are over, and the Inquisition, in fact, did not execute people. After confessing, the offender was sentenced in a state court. Calm down, Arnie. No one will burn you. According to the law, they'll just chop your head off. Wow, it looks like everyone is scared of your ability to release flames from your hands. It seems to be powerful magic. Hey, Arnie, now you'll be eating only raw meat like a carnivore. Can you feel how quickly your levels of adrenaline and aggression are rising? Of course, it'll be a little difficult for you to chew, as human teeth aren't adapted to eating raw meat. Better cut it into small pieces, like the ancient Mongols did. In fact, the most famous dish made of raw meat, steak tartare, is named after them. Without cereals, vegetables, and fruits, the flow of glucose, which is fuel for your body, will stop. Your liver will start to process its fat stores to meet your body's energy needs, and you'll start to lose weight, up to 5 kilograms a week. Your muscles will start to dehydrate and dry out. That's why a meat diet is so popular among Hollywood celebrities and supermodels. Cholesterol levels in your blood will go up, and, well, let's face it, you'll be at increased risk of heart disease. Amino acids will fill your intestines, and they'll mix with bacteria from your skin, and that will lead to a super grungy body odor. Raw meat does contain some dangerous microorganisms, such as E. coli, salmonella, and listeria. And they can cause you to suffer from diarrhea, vomiting, and just general old heaviness in your stomach. But when your body finally adapts to such food, you'll feel a surge in energy and physical strength. The reason for this is increased testosterone and vitamin D levels. Even Bruce Lee himself, when preparing for fights, liked to have a tall glass of yummy fresh meat smoothie. Our ancient ancestors used to eat raw meat, but their lives changed forever when they figured out how to use fire and began cooking. That cut by two-thirds the time needed for digestion. 
So energy use moved from the stomach to the brain, and this triggered a cognitive revolution. Humans began to use much more abstract thinking and developed complex languages. And as a result, modern civilization developed. So eat, my dear Arnold, eat. Hey, Dipknob, stop acting like you're king of the beasts. Have some respect, Arnold. You and the chimpanzee share ancestors. We diverged from them seven million years ago. Life lived in the forest and in open plains simultaneously helped us develop bipedalism and our upright posture. This in turn freed up our hands for tool use and other useful activities such as taming fire. Cooking food helped contribute to better and faster digestion, which, together with some other things, led to us developing our bigger and better brains. Yes, Arnie, I know it's hard to believe, but the march of evolution is still ongoing. For example, because we began to cook food before eating, our jaws have shrunk and wisdom teeth have already stopped growing in 20% of human beings. In addition, along with the improvement in the quality of food, the average height of Homo sapiens has increased by 10 centimeters. But then again, so has his weight. However, for modern people, it's not body changes that are so important, but technology. It allows us to move around while sitting, fly, and even get a cold beer without getting out of our comfy chairs. What'll be next? Wow, look! It looks like scientists have created a supercomputer that can predict our future. And it has a message for us. Let's listen. Right in front of you is the new generation of the DeLorean. I've upgraded this Tesla so you can now travel not only to another city, but also to another year. 1986, for example. It worked! We're at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant just a few minutes before the disaster. Arnold, bring the camera. You're gonna shoot the explosion on it and I'll post the video on YouTube. I'd say at least 20 million views are guaranteed. Hmm, is the battery already dead? Put it on charge. It's a European outlet, doof knuckle. You need an adapter, or I guess not already. So, it's all because of you. It doesn't matter. You need to get out of here, fast. There's a power bank in the glove box. Plug it into the car. Damn it, it takes at least 60 seconds to charge. Get out the protective suit. Just by looking at the area, you'd never know that you're in a radiation zone. But in fact, the radiation here is cosmic. That's not quite what I expected. Maybe you swapped bags with someone. With radiation above 500 rentgens, your hair and nails fall out instantly. Your skin turns red, and all those diseases you've got get worse. But you're lucky, Arnold. You won't feel much pain because you'll fall into a coma in three, two... Oh, you're already out. This is due to the fact that the radiation here is 20,000 rentgens per hour, and this technology can't handle that onslaught. The battery should be enough to get you back to the year 2020. Go! What a trip that turned out to be! Mother of God, it's a dang dinosaur! Oh, Arnold, you scared me! I see you decided to visit the Paleo History Museum. It's really cool here. Even Orochimaru from Naruto is here. I heard he knows secrets of resurrection. He can bring dead things back to life. What the heck? No. He's using it on the dinosaurs. Run, you dang fool. Dinosaurs are very dangerous. Whether it's herbivores, carnivores, or even those radical dinosaurs, they're insanely angry. And you would be too if you hadn't eaten in 66 million years. Furthermore, the dinosaurs are getting even angrier now that they see what happened to their descendants over the course of evolution. All the world's leaders have declared martial law. Alas, very little is really known about the true behavior of dinosaurs. It seems the best solution they've come up with is to hire a rabid turkey specialist. Yee! Attack! 
Dinosaurs reigned on Earth for 160 million years, but the fall of a meteorite changed the course of evolution and allowed for the development of our ancestors' mammals. Now, only the strongest will survive. But what in tarnation's going on now? Wait. I think I get it. Over the last 66 million years, the Earth's climate has gotten colder, and the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has changed. It looks like dinosaurs can't live here anymore and are gonna die out once again. Hmm, what to do? In theory, we could build a Jurassic Park. We'll feed them and artificially maintain the climate. This place could be the most profitable tourist spot in the world. And we'll also be a global supplier of eggs and manure. Dino poop. But then again, an ordinary dinosaur eats a ton of grass a day, or more than 100 kilograms of meat. More than likely, the dinosaurs will eat all the fauna in the park and then probably start eating each other until they die out again. No matter how you slice it, the dinosaurs just aren't going to be able to live in our time. Do you really want to save them, Arnie? The only option is to send the dinosaurs back to the past, to their perfect world. What are your plans for today? Hmm, maybe the plan for today is try not to die. Are you scared, Arnold? But what if this is all made up? What if I told you neither King Kong nor Godzilla could survive on Earth? It's pretty simple. Look, the largest man in the world ever was Robert Pershing Wadlow. His height was 2 meters 72 centimeters, and he lived for just 22 years. He suffered from a disease called gigantism. With this disease, the brain releases excessive amounts of growth hormone. There Therefore, in the process of human evolution, the norms for height and weight were established, and any large deviations are considered disease. One of the biggest stresses is to the heart, which has to circulate 15 liters of blood instead of just the normal five. And the heart often can't withstand such strenuous dynamics for too long. But what about the fact that there are other giant creatures on Earth, like whales? Well, everything can be easily explained. The density of water is higher than the density of air and is almost equal to a human's density. That's why we can float on the surface of salt water. This means that the habitat itself supports the weight of living things. For example, whales, whose ancestors 50 million years ago looked a lot like a dog with hooves. Godzilla and King Kong could not exist on Earth at all because of our friend gravity. But let's say we turn off gravity to scientifically allow for the existence of Godzilla and King Kong. Everything on Earth that isn't fixed to the ground would take off into space. That includes people who, if caught in the open, will be shot off into the great beyond. And those lucky few who find themselves in a room somewhere can still live for some time until the houses eventually fly upward. And in the end, our planet will completely crumble into pieces. The average distance from Earth to the moon is 384,467 kilometers, and every year the moon moves three and a half centimeters further away. In the entire history of humanity so far, only 12 people have stepped on the surface of the moon. You will be the 13th. I agree, it's not the luckiest number, but just imagine, there'll be no one on the moon except for you. True, this ain't Miami. The temperature is minus 173 degrees Celsius, and everywhere you go, there's radiation 200 times higher than on Earth. So you can't do it without a spacesuit. But in the meantime, as a tourist, you can check into the hotel, although construction isn't slated until 2025. Let's go to the far side of the moon. Especially because there's a bunch of cool equipment left there by astronauts. Arnold, jump into the lunar rover, start the engine, and drive. Believe it or not, there are a few lunar seas. Only, they're not filled with water, but solidified lava. Arnold, wrong path! 
pedal! Hit the brake! Congratulations, Arnold. You just smashed into the U-22 Chinese Lunar Rover. And you damaged your spacesuit. Oh, no. Houston, we have a problem. Don't worry, Arnold. Help is on the way. True, it's gonna take them three days to get here. And try to conserve your oxygen. Welcome to the year 2100. This girl has contact lenses that connect to the internet. She can look up any information about you in just a few seconds. Here you will die as a virgin. Get inside. This space elevator will lift you up to an altitude of 35,000 kilometers above sea level, straight to a huge ring that turns the energy of the Earth's rotation into electricity. To your right is a human body part shop. Let's go inside and look for a replacement for your unfortunate finger. This doctor can recreate an entire organism from only the genome. So all the zoos here are teeming with dinosaurs, dodo birds, and even Neanderthals. You want a snack? 3D printers print food from artificial animal cells, synthesize flour and minerals, and it tastes better than food from 2019. What a wonderful world, right? But it all could turn out quite different. Nuclear war, global warming, pandemics. This could also be our future. Science is a double-edged sword. We can use it for good, or we could all die from it. Look, this is the same guy from the sign. The circus ringmaster. Oh my god. Did that lion actually just swallow the whole two-headed dude? No, actually it seems the heads are unharmed. But what's gonna happen now? Is the big show of the season canceled? Hey, it seems the manager has noticed you and wants you to be in the cast. But only if you agree to have these two good as new heads sewn onto your body. Isn't that what you've always dreamed of? Well, since you agree, I think you should find out more about the upcoming surgery. The first successful head transplantation was done by Charles Guthrie in 1908. He did it on dogs, though. One of the heads was sewn to the neck of a dog's body upside down. In the 1950s, Demikhov achieved full functioning of a second head. He transplanted 20 heads together with the front half of the dogs. Then the head of one dog was transplanted onto the body of another. And then there was a monkey, which after transplantation even tried to bite one of the doctors. In 2013, Sergio Canavero announced plans for a human head transplant. The estimated cost was $12.8 million. In 2017, under his leadership, a dead human head was transplanted onto a corpse. Actually, it suits you, Arnold. Now it's time to rehearse your part. I hope you don't screw up and disgrace mm. these beautiful heads. <gasps> You're gonna have to juggle as you ride your unicycle on a springboard through burning hoops. Yay! They don't seem to like you being so stupid, Arnie. Try not to interfere with the professionals managing your body. All that's required of you is to not spoil the performance. The grand premiere. All eyes are fixed on you, Arnold. Today, you are the main part of the show. Fingers crossed, buddy. You're doing great. Just a little more and... Is that Tagaya over there? Did she come to see you? No, no, don't get distracted. Not now, Arnold. What a doofwad. By trying to be a gentleman, you disgraced yourself and the Truel brothers. That was the greatest failure this circus has ever seen. Psst. Arnold! Arnold! Wake up! Arnold, you could sleep through your whole life. Get up already. People sleep for one-third of their lives. During sleep, the body is restoring. Some species of birds, marine mammals, and reptiles can stay awake for up to 10 days. One half of their brain is asleep while the other one is working. In order not to waste time, streamer Asian Andy slept online and earned $16,000 in one night from donations. I think someone's breaking into your house, Arnold. Wake up! Arnold, who 
Who are these guys? They don't seem anything like your friends. Congratulations, Arnie. Somehow you've gotten yourself into what looks like pretty big trouble. Again. What the jumping Jiminy is this place? Looks like a college dormitory at not the best university. Wow, Arnold. Looks like you could be a superstar in a new reality series. How on earth did they get a file on all of you guys? Whoopsie daisy, I guess they got you here by mistake. What do they want from all of you? Uh-oh, I don't like this at all. Arnold, haven't you been able to sleep? A day without sleep leads to headaches. Your hearing becomes noisy and difficult. And your memory becomes impaired. Believe that on average, a person can endure no more than five days without sleep. That's when the real oh. test begins. Oh. Optical and oh. begin to The first to set a no sleep world record was 17 year old Randy Gardner, who stayed up for 11 days. But this was later beaten by Robert McDonald, who stayed awake for 19 days. But the representatives of the Guinness Book didn't <laughs> confirm it. And conducting such kind of experiments on yourself is quite dangerous for your health. You're the only one left, Arnie old pal. I'm reminded of one legend about Soviet scientists. They put five people in a room for 15 days with a stimulant gas that kept them all awake. Arnold, you're free! I can imagine you probably want to go home and have a good night's sleep. But it seems that you need 30 more days without sleep to get to the nearest town. Well, good luck, Arnold. You look like crap. Wait, are you in a coma? Looking at you, you'd think you're dead, but you're still alive inside. In a coma, you're unable to respond to external stimuli. Because of this, you'll be the best K-pop fan. And you'll be able to listen to the same song on repeat for years. People can be in a coma from a few days to a dozen years. Edward Obara fell into a coma at the age of 16 and spent 42 years this way. According to patients, during a coma, they feel like some kind of matter. They wandered along long and damp corridors, mazes, went through complex oh. mechanisms. The degree of a coma is determined by the Glasgow Coma Scale, where 15 points is clear consciousness and three points is brain death. Arnold, they're gonna turn off the machine. Wake up uh -huh. and I promise no more experiments on you. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Come on, Arnie, you can do it. I never thought I'd say this, but you really had me worried. Arnold, you're just a magnet for trouble. Yay, that looks really bad. You need immediate hospitalization. You're not gonna make it to the hospital. Your heart could stop. You need an emergency blood transfusion to maintain pressure in your circulatory system. During the Vietnam War, coconut IVs were sometimes used to treat the wounded. Amazingly, coconut water is quite similar to human blood plasma. So what do we have? Cola. Okay, let's get to work. But first, you need to get rid of all the gas. If the gas contained in the drink gets inside your blood vessels, it'll literally tear you apart from the inside. Cola contains sugar, glucose. This is a perfect source of fast energy and allows you to really perk up. It seems to have worked. The cola has taken root in your body. But your appearance has changed just a little, buddy. Even your hair has changed color. But on the other hand, you'll be a most welcome guest at any children's party. With so much caffeine in the cola running through your veins, you only have to sleep once every three days. Now, you have much more time than regular people. After all, even professional athletes drink cola for a quick dose of energy. And you can always get a refill at the nearest supermarket. No, stop, you kamikaze nutball. Just one single Mentos could turn you into a surface-to-air missile. Don't worry, it won't ruin your day. Cola even helps combat mild depression. But 
To be honest, Arnold, coal in your blood is actually deadly. Your eyes, kidneys, nerves, and heart suffer the most. Yeah, looks like coal is not an option. Hold on. Wow, Arnold, congratulations. You died and went to heaven. Arnold, get in line and wait for St. Peter to let you in. Ooh, how cool is this? Hey, wow, look, is that John Lennon? No, wait, it's just Jesus. Here there's even a wall of paintings of God made by great historical artists. Here there's e in ancient times, people believe that God was terrifying and bloodthirsty. For example, Aztecs constantly sacrificed people to their god Huitzilopochtli to make it rain. The ancient Greek gods personified human qualities or natural phenomena. Unfortunately, Arnie, in the Christian paradise, unlike the Muslim one, you don't get 72 virgins. But hey, look, right there, it's John Lennon! Or is that Jesus again? And here he is. He has many names. The Creator, Jehovah, Adonai, Yahweh, God. Sleeping. You probably shouldn't mess with his stuff, Arnie. Arnold, what are you thinking? You can't go in there. This is the control center for the whole world. Don't touch anything, Arnold. Oh, this is not good. Over the past few centuries, religious belief in the world has been dropping. And God is the most popular being in the world has a lot of haters. You dare play God, Arnold. Man is simply too greedy for this role. There are lots of examples from history, and they all ended pretty badly. Arnold, stop! This ain't a joke, buddy. Great. Now everything's gone haywire. Fanatical faith has always led to wars. And now a nuclear crusade has begun. Arnold, stop before it's too late. Are you even listening to me? Phew, just in time. Hey, God, don't take this the wrong way, but thank God you're here. Arnold, looks like you're done. Hello, Arnold. You've been teleported a lot during our science show, but did you ever wonder how the teleporter works? There are several ways to travel through time. Let's start with wormholes. Where have you been dreaming of going? To Australia? No problem, get in. A wormhole is a tunnel through the space-time continuum that theoretically could send you to any point in the universe in just a few seconds. But time is relative, Arnie, and it might take just a few seconds for you, but on Earth, decades could pass. Congratulations, Arnie. You're in Australia in the year 2050. It's a little uncomfortable, yeah? And what if you needed to move around at the same time? Quantum teleportation can help in this matter. Your body consists of a hundred trillion cells, which in turn consists of a hundred trillion atoms each. And each atom contains tiny pinpoint particles, quanta, which could help you teleport over huge distances. It would be great to find someone who could help you build a quantum teleporter. Well, look who's here, Rick and Morty. Arnie, take their drawings. With their help, you could create a device for instantaneous movement anywhere in the universe and even into alternate universes. Now, when the teleporter's ready, climb into the box and make sure there's no one else inside. Well, so long, Arnold. In quantum teleportation, the original body dies and a duplicate is created at the destination point. No big loss in your case. Wow! I told you, during teleport, you need to be alone inside the booth. Don't touch anything in the laboratory. What have you done? Your DNA, which was hybridized with that of a scorpion, was transmitted through the satellite system and turned all the inhabitants of the planet into human-scorpion hybrids. You've destroyed Dimension C-137, you stupid idiot, Arnie. Rick and Morty would have traveled back to the original universe, where the mutants don't exist, but you can only do it a couple of times. I don't think we want to see what happens to Arnie in this universe. Better we go back to Australia. Fortunately, I saved Arnold's quantum data, and therefore have the ability to recover his useless body. Arnie, you should crawl through the wormhole in the direction of your home in 2018. And don't forget the blueprints of your body. It seems now we know how humanity will create a teleporter in 2050. Remember the time traveler's rule of thumb. Don't interfere with the lives of the locals, such as this one, for example.
Otherwise, you risk changing the course of evolution of all humankind. Arnold, it's not a bear. Up with your ass and get out of here. A T-Rex can develop speeds of up to 12 miles per hour. Given your current shape, it's time for you to start praying. After all, the power of this lizard's bite is almost twice that of Megalodon, and with its muscle strength, it could easily juggle a hippo. Arnold, I warned you, look where you step. Don't run straight ahead, try zigzagging. The weight of 7 tons and the body length of 13 meters makes the T-Rex a really ungainly creature. It needs 4 seconds just to turn its body 90 degrees, so there's a head start for you. And if the dinosaur stumbles, it may seriously damage itself, not to mention that getting up is no easy task. Arnie, how about you try winning your life back from this guy in arm wrestling? Ready? Go! A Tyrannosaurus forelimb doesn't look like much relative to its whole body, but it's still up to 3 feet long, and the biceps muscle can lift a weight of 420 pounds, which is almost three times the weight of your entire body. There is one finer point, though. T-Rex can't rotate or flex its arms, so with the right technique, you have every chance to win. Come on, Arnie, show that beast who's the king of dinosaurs here. Okay. Clearly, luck wasn't on your side today.